Hub Radio Phoenix is an internet-based podcast platform providing numerous special interest programs reaching over 100,000 viewers per week. Hi, I'm Ron Lutters, executive producer of Hub Radio Phoenix. We don't pretend to be journalists, but we're not afraid to say what's on our minds. We thank you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing to Hub Radio Phoenix. Stay tuned, stay faithful, as the best is yet to come. Hey everybody, Pasta Jardula from the Combo Couch, and when I'm in Phoenix, I listen to Hub Radio Phoenix. Pasta, you know you can listen to them anywhere, they're on the internet. Hub Radio Phoenix is awesome, only my second favorite show to the Combo Couch. Fighting back, current events, news talk, and political commentary. Now here's your host, Ron Lutter. Hey, look, it's just the two of us. <laughs> Welcome to the show tonight. I've been told that I should move the microphone down because people don't know that I, my lips are actually moving. They think Ray is doing some ventriloquist work for me. I am. And this is Ray Michaels. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, uh, you know we're missing the bald one here today. Yes, this is our uh, Wednesday Fighting Back show, and we always have Josh Bernstein on from JoshBernsteinUncensored.com. Dot com. Well, he's on assignment tonight, but he's as close as your phone. But before we start, I just wanted to say, Ray, it's uh, we are so thankful. We've got some great sponsors here, and uh, we'd encourage all of you to use those sponsors. I know if you're watching in other parts of the nation, and we hope you are, and we know you are, uh, you can't very well use some of our sponsors, but uh, I'd, I'd sure like to uh, to think that you know you, uh, one of them is a national company, as you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you can utilize them, uh, and we'd encourage you to do that. Now, Ray, we have had a lot of a lot of people uh, talking about everything in the world that's going on, and it's it's not good. Uh, you know, we've called for the uh, for the president, the Pino. What's Pino again? That's a president in name only. That's Pino. right. Pino, Pino, the Pino, president in name only, Biden. And, of course, we're not real happy uh, with, uh, with him. And uh, uh, I noticed that as he goes around, he looks like somebody that's totally lost. He's got people in front of him pointing which way to go. Have you noticed that? Almost like he's at Disneyland. Yeah, like a little kid. Yeah. And I saw some pictures of him trying to kiss some little kids. Uh, now, remember, he was he was walking in one direction. He pointed over to the right. And I, I'm thinking, what what is it? And then they increased the volume, and somebody yelled out, squirrel! And he, and he started moving in that direction. <laughs> Listen, folks, <laughs> um, this is not a comedy hour, but I would appreciate a why laugh not? track. Do you have a laugh track? Why, uh, why not? Why can't it be a comedy hour? Neil, do you have a laugh track there? Boy, no. to, wa to watch what's going uh, on. Okay. It, it, if it you don't laugh, you're going to start crying. That's for that's sure. That's true. Listen, we'd also we want to thank you all for joining us tonight, and we'd we'd like to encourage you to to uh, pass our programs on to other people. They're valuable. Uh, a lot of them are time sensitive, but they're always good to go back and see what's been going on. Uh, we'd like you to like the show, and especially we'd like you to follow the show. And it's really important that you do that, that you subscribe. We want to get these numbers up because certain magic things happen if you can get the numbers up to some high numbers locally. Does the rabbit uh, come out of the hat? The rabbit pops out of the hat. And <laughs> What was that? Is that the squirrel? <laughs> no, I think that was Josh laughing. <laughs> it was Josh. Okay. So at any rate, we'd, uh, we'd encourage you to follow us. And above all, you know, we have some people that comment every week. And we, we get a kick out of reading your comments. And uh, some of them are very serious. I know I've got a couple that I need to answer on a very serious note. And uh, I will be doing that tomorrow. Uh, so kind of pardon us. I've, I've had a... I've had a damaged wing here, as, as you know, Ray. You have? How is your arm? Well, it's it's uh, it's been better. I'm going to start some uh, new physical therapy. Uh, this Will you be able to throw out the, uh, the opening pitch? The opening pitch at yeah. the uh, Chicago Cubs game. You'll do better than Fauci. I know you will. <laughs> well, I don't know where first base is, so I... <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> 
I guess the, the audience was amazed. That was an O. That was an O. Oh, yeah. oh. So at any rate, uh, lots going on, and and we want to talk about, a little bit about California, Doctor uh, Doctor Fauci. We want to talk about our Attorney General uh, and some good work that's being done there on the behalf of the people of the state of Arizona. Uh, audit materials should be coming in any day now, and there's lots and lots of lawsuits that are being brought forward. And uh, but uh, before we could do anything, uh, let's uh, see where on earth is Josh Bernstein. Josh, are you there? I am here. I am absolutely here. Okay. I'm glad to be joining you. Uh, unfortunately, not sitting next year, but I will be next week. And uh, I wanted to start with this. Whoever, owing allegiance to the United States, levies war against them or adheres to their enemies by giving those enemies aid and comfort within the United States or elsewhere is guilty of treason and shall suffer death or imprisonment and shall be incapable of holding any office in the United States. Now, why did I start with that? Well, it's pretty clear that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Maoist Mark Milley, is treasonous for what he has done, and uh, I'm going to keep it PG uh, for the show here. Well, but excuse me, excuse, excuse me, Josh, for the audience, we've, we've described uh, the penalty for what he has done, but tell us what he has done. I'm going to right now. Thank you, sir. According to transcripts of two phone calls, one took place on October 30th, 2020, before the election, and one took place on January 8th, 2021, two days after what was supposed to be a peaceful rally, which was then infiltrated by the FBI and Capitol Police on January 6th, he made two phone calls without telling President Trump, without telling Christopher Miller, who was the, uh, the, the, um, the Secretary of Defense at that time, the interim. And basically, this is the worst insubordination we've ever seen. But more than that, it's worse than that. It's actually treason because he had a conversation with his counterpart, his name is General Lee, and this is exactly that wasn't verbatim. Robert. It wasn't Robert E. Lee. It wasn't Robert E. Lee. Nope. These are the exact words that were spoken on this transcript, according to Bob Woodward, who's a you know a pretty well-known author who's done lots of books on presidents and presidential candidates and all that stuff. And so he has now confirmed that he's actually said this. But this is verbatim what was said, General Lee. I want to assure you that the American government is stable and everything is going to be okay. We are not going to attack or conduct any kinetic operations against you. Then he goes on to say, General Lee, you and I have known each other for well over five years now. If we were going to attack, I would call you ahead of time so it would never be a surprise. Whoa. Right there is U.S. Code 182381, which is what I read to begin with, which is treason. He should be charged with treason. He should be court martialed. And he obviously should be resigning immediately. I don't understand where the Republicans are. When are they going to start with the hearings and all that stuff to try to get him under oath so that he's in, on, under oath? And in case he lies, then you can add a perjury charge on top of that. But apparently he's proud of it because he's already said and confirmed that, yes, indeed, he did this. We have got to hold him accountable or in the future, God forbid, more and more generals will disobey the executives well, and the well, president. Well, Ray, Ray, if I'm not mistaken, he's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the president. Yes, this of the is United a States. major deal. Um, you know, Josh, I I I. I some of these things that happen here and we hear about them and people are doing things and nobody's standing up and it just seems as though a lot of these rules these regulations these 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 orders that are given to us by the constitution that we should follow certain manners to have the republican form of government the republic that we have and people are just saying yeah, yeah i know it says that but yeah i don't know you know uh, it's okay. You know, we can forgive them. They probably had a bad day. Mm -hmm. I don't understand where are, where are the rules? Where are people following the rules? This is, the, it's almost like we've become a laissez-faire uh, type of government where we just let things pass 
And it's like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, no, it, it wasn't that bad. We can forgive them, uh, brush it under the rug, and it'll be fine. Well, again, this is the two-tier justice system that we have been living under for the last, I don't know, probably six to eight years, if not even longer than that, where if you're a conservative and you do something, I mean, you could jaywalk and they'd throw you in prison. Well, they hold you but to yet, the fire. You can have the Joint Chiefs of Staff literally conduct a treasonous act of insubordination and then telepath to our enemies, which again is aiding and abetting our enemies, letting them know what's going to happen beforehand if it was to happen. Amazing. This guy needs to be strung up by you know what's, and he needs to be held accountable for what he has done. So if I was to tell anyone anything, if you're a patriot in this country, which I'm sure you are and you're watching this show, contact your member of Congress and demand that they do an immediate investigation into this, bring him in front of Congress, and I think the military ought to court-martial him immediately. He should be stripped of every single one of his medals. He should be stripped of his retirement and his pension. And I'd like to tell you where he could shove those medals, but I'll leave it at that. And he can sleep under a bridge with about 37 other He can sleep under a bridge with the rats, as far veterans. as I'm concerned. So, so, Josh, you have in front of you the actual transcripts of those calls. I have the actual transcripts, but I have what was been reported that were his exact words. And again, this is from the Washington Post, so you can't say that this is a right-wing conspiracy hit piece. This is coming from the Washington Posterior. They're about as left-wing as it gets. And so this is what he has said. And again, this was excerpts from a new book called Peril. Not that I'm trying to plug Bob Woodward or anything, but yeah, his new book is called Peril. And, uh, you know, this is the information that he has. Well, obviously, Maoist Mark Milley has been quiet, but just today he confirmed. He confirmed that I yes, was, indeed, I was just going it. to say that. I heard that the Pentagon had, in fact, confirmed that he had made this phone call. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I, I don't know where the Republicans are. There are only a few of them that seem to ever get upset and, and, and do the, uh, the qu hard questions that need to be done. But this is beyond, uh, beyond the pale. And I would imagine, or at least think, that the American people would be just petrified over the, the fact that uh, this man has gone around. And I understand there's some other things in terms of uh, nullifying uh, President Trump's ability to carry the, uh, the suitcase, the nuclear uh, codes that he had his uh, staff officers uh, swear allegiance to him and not to the Constitution. And uh, that uh, there, if there was anything that uh, was the least bit suspect that Donald yeah. Trump might uh, order a nuclear strike, which they try to make the guy look like he's a bumbling idiot, like the guy that's right. in there is a bumbling idiot. And uh, Well, uh, first off, the, that was uh, a made-up deep state hit piece saying that he was going to do a, a nuclear strike, but also that he even told people you know, to ignore certain people. That was all garbage. That, that's not been true. What is true is that this is just another deep state hit piece, because if you remember, and this was reported from CNN, Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, said that she spoke to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, who assured her that there were, quote, safeguards in place to prevent President Trump from ordering a, a nuclear strike, okay? Now, the bottom line is, he can't just do that right off the bat anyway. OK, there are safeguards and protocols involved with that, including with the military. But more importantly, this was another scare tactic after January 6th. And they're trying to say that he was unhinged. Well, this means that Nancy Pelosi was in on it. So when Milley then said that there's been safeguards put up, there was no safeguards. You know what those safeguards were? Basically, the fact that he got down on his hands and knees and uh, and told his counterpart in China that if anything happens, I'll let you know first. You call that a safeguard? That's not a safeguard. That's a treasonous mm, act. Treason, yes. So now would you, because I heard those same reports about uh, Speaker Pelosi, uh, is, is she now involved in this? I mean, is it, no is, it, is it appropriate to have a conversation between the Speaker and the Joint Chiefs of Staff with regard to the information that they talked about? Is, is that appropriate? 
It is not appropriate. As a matter of fact, they have nothing to do with one another. One is in, is the Speaker of the House. The other one is the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Why are they even having these conversations? And that the, would be number joint, one. The Joint Chiefs report to the President, directly to the President. Correct. Not, now, where, correct. Where, not to the Congress. Ron, where does the right. Secretary of State come in on something like this? Well, I believe Mark Esper was also involved in yeah, this. He was, uh, he was the – Esper was uh, – I'm trying to remember what he was at the time. Um, he was – Go ahead. What was his position at the time? I'm trying to remember whether it was defense. You're breaking up there a little bit, Josh. He was. I think he was the defense secretary. Yeah, I, I believe he was. Um, yeah, th this is this is very troubling. And and once again, I, I haven't heard any reaction from the White House. And and this is this has been confirmed. No, they're praising him. This has been they're confirmed. praising him. Yeah, he said I. They're going around on CNN and MSLSD, and they're going, "Oh, he should be honored. What an honorable thing that he's done, and he's an incredible person, and he'll go down in history as one of the great joint." Chief. Are you kidding me? Wow, well, guys should a be no. immediately. You know, it's it's the same thing that happened with uh, with Comey as well. You know, people were praising him for making decisions and for coming out. Oh, we're not going to go against uh, Hillary Clinton. You know, no no reasonable person would prosecute considering the information we have. And it, it just seems as though it's it's that same. We come back to the same thing, Ron. It's a two tier justice system. If you get to a certain point, you can do no wrong. Well, you know, you're forgiven. You know, the, the, uh, one of the things I did want to mention is going on this weekend is a, the little subject that we talk about, and that's January 6th. Uh, there's a big rally at the nation's capital, and that is about the people that kind of got caught up in, in this quote unquote yes. insurrection that, that the FBI mm -hmm. and the CIA were instrumental in. And, you know, Ray, they're, they're going to be there this, this weekend. And uh, right now, uh, Pelosi has asked the Pentagon if they would send troops there to help them to control the mobs, which I don't understand what part of the First Amendment is controllable by military uh, personnel. But the bottom line, Ray, in terms of dual justice, we see things such as with the shaman going into the Capitol and saying that he was trespassing when we have videos that clearly show the police officers opening the door for them and right. letting them in. How could they be trespassing when they're asked to come in? Yeah, so were they asked to leave? Because I remember them standing in the room and, and taking a few minutes to pray, and, and the, poli the, the police the were Capitol participating. The police were praying as well. Right, right. So they weren't throwing them out or asking them to leave. And so this is the justice system. These people were exercising their First Amendment right of free speech and to petition the Congress uh, for grievances. Exactly. And they, they were and thrown in jail, and yet this guy has cr created, and I agree with you, this is treasonous, and, and, and everybody goes, the powers that be, what a wonderful man. This is yeah. wonderful. He well, stopped the nuclear, no, no. They're trying to make Trump look bad is what they're trying to do. Trump was not an yeah. idiot. He wasn't going to push the button. Uh, and he can't nah. do, as you said, he can't do that alone. There's a protocol you go through. It's not just hand me the suitcase and push a button. It's not that right. easy. Right. We already have, you know, 500 something that walled off, likely not. Hey Josh, well, you're, Josh, you're, you're breaking, breaking, you're breaking up, up a little if you're bit. moving if you're okay, moving here, here, around. Let me, let me see if I go somewhere else. So let we're on the phone with Josh Bernstein from joshbernsteinuncensored.com. Stop and by there. And he is there. on assignment. How's that? Is that better, guys? That That's is better. a lot better. Okay, you, perfect. So let's do you have your tinfoil hat on right now? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're having right we're now. having some trouble again. We have our patriots that are already locked up. And a lot of them are stuck in solitary confinement. They've been beaten. They've been treated horribly. The last thing we need is more people to be put into that situation. So what I have heard from Roger Stone and some other peoples is the only people that are going to be down there for that rally are going to be federal agents 
they all are saying that this thing is a major trap. So anyone that's thinking of going, you may want to think twice or you may want to really think about it. And as I've said before, if we're going to go back down to Washington again, it's not going to be a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand. It's going to be by the millions. And I'll leave it at that. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff going on as well. Um, you know, we just had uh, the Secretary of State Blinken appear in front of Congress. Uh, well, when I say appear in front of Congress, I'm talking about telephonically or video. <laughs> he, he, he didn't want to go the few blocks to actually go in front of Congress. Yes, Josh, I, wanted I know. To, I wanted to know your thoughts on that. Oh, I thought it was just atrocious. Number one, he lied. He said there was less than 100 people there. Most estimates are a minimum of 500 to as many as 2,500 to 5,000 Americans still stranded in Talibanistan. That's number one. Number two, you're right. He didn't even have the common courtesy to go to go down to the cat to the to Congress, and instead he you know he he kind of phoned it in, and he lied again. That's the thing. He lied. How are these people allowed to lie to Congress? And not be held accountable. I mean, Dr. Falsey, for instance, lied about not funding the, the Wuhan lab right to uh, Rand Paul's face. And yet nothing, nothing's happening because these are the these are the consequences of a stolen election. And when you have a coup, which now we know clearly was a coup, it was a military coup led by Maoist Millie. This was a military coup to steal the votes and to keep Trump from being in office. It's as plain as day. Well, you know, um, I, I have witnessed this over the years. You can go all the way back to Tammany Hall and that where there was the dual system. But, you know, as a child, and, and we've all been there, I used to think that these things happen only in third world countries, Ray. That yeah. you don't see this kind of thievery, conniption, conniving, and uh, and so forth in in the, in America that that we do things the proper way, and this is really as an older person, I think how could I have been so blind when I was a young person? Well, mm -hmm. you know, when you think of our founding fathers, Josh, they said that yes. we we're willing to give up our life, our fortune, and our sacred honor. They believe that their honor, their integrity, was sacred. And they would not mm -hmm. even think about lying or cheating or stealing or committing treason or doing any of these things. Now it seems as though it's commonplace. Well, yeah, I made a mistake. You know, forgive me. You know, I'm just glad that we have redemption and grace. And, and this is, you know, I, you know, I just made a mistake. I mean, we have people that were <laughs> doing crazy things on network TV while they're meeting and they're doing things and they're still not fired. We have people who are lying and cheating and helping uh, another uh, politician uh, advance uh, a sibling and they're still on television. It, it seems as though, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But they hold the other side very accountable for things that maybe was a slip of the tongue that they didn't even mm -hmm. intend to do it. The intention wasn't there. And the motive right. wasn't there and the heart wasn't there, but they still say, well, you have to do this. But they're not looking at themselves. Where's the no. personal accountability, a personal liability? Where is that, Ron? I was, I was watching this afternoon uh, Senator Kennedy from uh, Louisiana, uh, and they had a lady that was testifying there. She was going to become a, f a federal judge. Um, uh, I'm not sure of her first name. Her last name was Sung, S-U-N-G. Chinese, and uh, he asked her a question. She had made some comments about uh, Gorsuch when he was being uh, going through and being uh, Nominated. questioned yeah. uh, by the by the United States Senate, and she said he was totally uh, incapable of being a judge. And Kennedy asked her about that, and uh, she refused to answer. He asked her again. His whole five minutes, he must have asked her ten times. And she said, well, she says, that was only in writing, and I thought it was a closed letter that would not become public. Well, as you know, uh, funny things happen about closed letters that are supposed to become public. Well, integrity is what happens when no one's looking. Exactly, <laughs> so. Ray. You're, and and this, this woman, 
I, she never did answer the question, and, uh, and Kennedy just ripped her apart. And I, I hope they do not take this lady and make her a federal judge because uh, the, the the prejudices and so forth and the lying that she did. And all she said, well, I didn't write the letter. I only signed it. Well, does that make it any less? Uh, it's it's as if you, I mean, it's implied that you agree with everything yes, in there because this, you put your name on it. Right. Uh, it doesn't make it any any less caustic that, that you that you weren't the one that penned the letter. I mean, the Declaration of Independence yeah. wasn't penned by all the all the signers, but by their name on there, it's implied that they agreed with the document. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. We we have this two tier justice system, and the Constitution is only followed by one half and not the other. And you know, you not just this lady. What about that? thing that's the assistant secretary of health in which Rand paul was questioning oh, it talking about how um you know why are you going to give you know uh, puberty blockers for pubescent children and things like that and she wouldn't it wouldn't answer the question either so none of them seem to do that it's like they can just skate through and get confirmed because a lot of times they get confirmed because of rhino establishment Republicans like Lindsey Graham, who, by the way, is secretly making sure that Biden's judges are going on the courts. Meanwhile, nobody else is doing it. It's just Lindsey graham the as I like to call him. Well, you it's know, unbelievable. Lin- and that's why I keep saying it's the global Cratic Party of Washington versus us. Now, didn't didn't Lindsey Graham say, well, I've never I've never not voted for any president or any uh, presidential nominee uh that has come in front of me i've never voted for any uh, against any of them i mean he stated that so (laughs) i know but that's not an excuse well no stupidity (laughs) yeah what i'm saying is why is he even there if he's going to vote yes every time why have why have the the why why sit in front of congress we could have had a greeter at walmart do it right yeah (laughs) no that's what i'm saying well josh uh tell you what um Let's once again tell our audience to to start making some phone calls. This general needs to resign or be fired. And, of course, the challenge is is that the president that should be resigning or being impeached or the 25th Amendment uh, being held against him will not do this. And as you said, they're going around and trying to bolster this man. But uh, Yeah, they're calling him a hero let's, instead of a zero. Let's get the American public behind this. Now, uh, yep. I'd, I'd like to change the subject for a minute uh, mm-hmm. to, to something Ray and I discussed, and then we'll go on to the California election. I think you had some words on that as well. But uh, the one thing that Ray and I are really quite pleased with is that our attorney general, Mark Bronovich, has filed a lawsuit against this this crazy mandate that the federal government has come up with about uh, people needing, uh, requiring that you get a vaccine if you're going to be working in a company with... Right. You know, Josh, before you start, you know, let's just backtrack. Okay, so we have, for the very first time in history, the president of the United States looking at the American people and saying, we've been patient, but our patience is growing thin. We've done everything for you. We've tested it. We've certified it. We, it, it it's, it's now approved by the FDA, and it's free. Why aren't you doing this? Our patience is growing thin. And Mainly I look, because we don't trust who's certifying it. Well, yeah, I looked at the, I looked at the television, and I thought, who the heck is this guy talking to me like this? It, it, right. It doesn't matter. The, you know, according to HIPAA regulations, I don't have to disclose anything to you. I don't exactly. have to tell you what my what my medical preference is, or what uh, what I've had done, or I or what diseases I I have. I don't have any, but um, it's it's amazing that they've taken this with a ninety nine point what six seven eight nine ninety nine point nine success rate, and they've made this into something so huge that they're now saying it's not about your individual freedom. No, this is yeah, about they actually said public that. health. And those were the exact words, as Josh just said. It's not about your freedom. The heck actually, it's not about it is. my freedom. It's everything. Actually, it is about yeah. our individual freedom. And I'll tell you right now, they can't do this, and I can prove that they can't do it based on the language that's already been spoken. You notice he said that they're going to mandate 
any business that has over 100 employees that they mandate that they take the vaccine. Or, right, a right big giant OR, or testing. Now, why did they say that? Because they can't mandate it. They don't have the power in the Constitution or the executive or anything else to mandate this. So what is this ultimately? This is scare tactics and fear tactics trying to bully, basically, uh, American businesses to go along with what they want done. But you know what they should do? American businesses that have more than 100 people that are on the books, guess what? You should fire the vaccinated and fire your Democrats and get underneath 100 employees, and then you can tell the government to go kiss it. Because now there's no mandate, there's no nothing, there's no policy at that point. You so know, who knows? Maybe that's what's going to happen here. So, Ron, what is your understanding of the OSHA regulation that he is saying that he's basing this mandating vaccine and or testing on? Well, I, I, I'm sorry, Ray. I don't understand it. He, he has no mandate. There is none. Well, a, according to OSHA, and this is where uh, uh, Jen Psaki also said, you know, it's based on what Congress has passed. They passed OSHA in, what, 1960, Josh, what, it was it 63, 67? I don't remember. Right, right, right. Yeah, anyway, the they, they passed OSHA, and under OSHA, it says if there is an emergency situation that affects a workplace, that they can have a, a type of emergency authorization to bring something forward. So they're saying that because of this pandemic that is 99 point six seven eight whatever it is More success rate the flu that, now. that that is such an emergency that osha can step in under the guise of congress has given them the power that they can step in and on an emergency basis that he can decree this because he knows from an executive standpoint you cannot from a congressional standpoint you cannot from a judicial standpoint you cannot but as he used the cdc to extend the moratorium on renters He's now used, he's now he's utilizing OSHA to have this so he can fall back and say, well, look, 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 this wasn't me. I just asked them to do it. And I've washed my hands of this. Uh, I was just doing what I thought was right, according to what OSHA said. So anyway, your question to to Josh was, how do you feel about all this stuff that's gone in now? Here in the state of Arizona, our uh, attorney general has now placed a lawsuit against the Biden administration yes. for this particular emergency authorization. And I understand there's going to be about 27 other states that do the same. Um, yes. Now, the, the, the thing that bothers me about this whole thing is the emergency issues that they're talking about, uh, you know, I don't know that I don't know what the trigger mechanism there is, but in reality, uh, remember Mahatma Gandhi and civil disobedience. Now, right here in 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 Phoenix, we have now some hospitals that are not opening up their maternity rooms because they don't have nurses. Now they're telling a lot of these nurses that you've got to get a vaccine. These are the same people, Ray, that worked through the worst of the pandemic last year. I know. They sacrificed. They worked 12, 15 hours a day to try to save people's lives, and they were heroes. Now they're and bums. And this is the thanks they get. They're absolute bums because they won't get a vaccine. Now, even further than this, Ray, I'm reading now there's a hospital up, uh, I'm not sure where it is, that something like 40% of the nursing staff's going to walk out. They're saying, we're not going to get it, and if you, you're going to fire us, we're you know, now they're talking about, and this is what I would tell everybody, do not quit your job. Yeah. Just report in. If they tell you you're no longer needed, wait till you get the papers that say you are fired. Yeah. Then they have to pay unemployment compensation. But if you quit, you don't. So, well, and also you may have a, a legal standing with wrongful termination. That's right. All right. So, Josh... Uh, you know, everybody says CDC, 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 right? Center for Disease Control. They forget the last two words that are the whole title. It's the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. So 
I want to know if you've, I've not seen it, Ron. I don't think you've seen it. Josh, you may have seen it. You dig deep into this. And prevention means boosting our own immune system. It means that we have, if you've come into contact with it, that you already have had it and they're giving no credit to somebody who already has the antibodies from the actual disease. There's nothing that they're doing to prevent this. They're not uh, all of the medicines that they wanted to use to make this go away a lot quicker with, uh, you know, you, you know what all the, I don't have to go well, through Well, one that, of but. the things, Ray, uh, that, that bothers me, you know, even though Pfizer has quote unquote been approved, I remember a time, and uh, you, I'm sure you do too, there was another drug called thalidomide that had been approved. Right, and it went through uh, five years of testing. Yes, by, by the, uh, uh, it wasn't the CDC, it was the, uh, uh, FDA? What's the FDA, yeah. the Federal Drug uh, Administration. And I don't know if, if uh, a lot of our younger people that are listening in we had babies that were being born without hands, without feet. Do you recall those? Those horrible images of of a drug that had been... Thalidomide? Is that your thing? Thalidomide, of, yeah. Thalidomide, yeah. And, children of thalidomide. And there were many children that were, were born severely handicapped. Thank God they, they lived. Uh, but, uh, you know, to think about, about that, that, that was a drug that had been... <laughs> not only had been tested, but given the green light to go ahead and use it. And, and there were numerous, I don't know how many children before they finally pulled it off the market. Ron, all you have to do is watch late night TV and you see all the attorneys come on. If you've been exposed to this, if you've been exposed to oh, that, yeah. if you've been exposed to this, if you've taken this drug, they knew what was going on, but they were still selling it. You hear that all the time on late night TV. Yeah. You know, call this attorney. We've, you know, uh, and that's going. That's what's going to happen here. Uh, there, there can be no question of that. But the bottom line, um, <clears throat> Josh, is one of the things that really torques me off is when you you see young women that say, "Well, I'm going to have an abortion. I'm going to kill my unborn child because it's my body and it's my choice." But you don't have a choice as to whether you're going to take a vaccine or not. That's right. ludicrous. So my body, my choice is only for women. Right. Mm-hmm. And and it has nothing to do with actual medical procedures that don't that are outside the abortion topic. Right. Yeah. And by the way, the Department of Justice is powerless to the Texas law. So other states can continue to do what they're doing and pass similar legislation because, again, they don't have the jurisdiction. That's the thing. It's all about scare tactics here. But one thing that needs to happen when Republicans get back in power is we need to do what we need to do for Section 230 against big tech. We need to do that against the big pharma companies, too, because right now they're not held financially and criminally liable for what they are doing. And again, you can look at the 1986 VAERS Act signed into law under Ronald Reagan, which was one of the worst things that he's done. Great president, but that was really bad. And what it did is it gave them immunity, basically, from any type of you know, criminal uh, wrongdoing or financial wrongdoing, and you can't sue these companies. That needs to change. Republicans, if they were smart for 2022, they would run on that. That would be a winning combination of running on Section 230 repeal and running on getting rid of the immunity for the big pharma companies. Do you, Josh, do you really think that they have the huervos to do that? Because I remember when no, we had... No, of course not. I mean, if the, I was, you know... <laughs> we had the House, the Senate, and, and the presidency. All they all ran on repeal and replace, and it gets in front of them, and they the maverick goes thumbs down on it. Paul Ryan yeah. doesn't push anything through. I mean, it, it's it's absurd because... Still votes. Every, every time the, the Democrats get in control... They will continue to chew and gnaw away to get as much as they can. They're going to try to get a lot, but even if they get a little bit, they're happy. We get back in. We run on. We're going to change this. And for some reason, it's a failure failure to launch every single time. Yes, it is. I mean, I remember the House Republicans, they did 40 or 45 show votes that they were going to repeal 
Obamacare, remember? Back yeah. then? Yeah. Oh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And then they get in and nothing. And it actually was President Trump that had to force the issue to get them to get rid of the individual mandate, which, again, they put into the tax cut bill. And it was the late uh, John McCain. Yeah. Was yeah, the vote. The Maverick. Yeah, sure. Maverick, all right. I mean. Exactly. So, uh, so do you think, um, so hopefully, and I don't know if this is possible, Josh, you probably know this a lot more, but if we here in the state of Arizona, where our attorney general places a lawsuit, and then we get a chain of other attorney generals from the other states, could it be a massive class action suit? Absolutely, it could be. Well, right now I can tell you there's 27 lawsuits in the lower courts right now that are that are all about you know man, mandating vaccines. If the Supreme Court takes even one of those cases up to the court, uh, they're going to make a decision. And once they make the decision that they need to make, all of this nonsense is going to go away. But what's end up what may end up happening here is what we may see what happened in the election in which Texas started the ball rolling. They had another 26, 28 states, whatever it was. And then the Supreme Court was immediately forced to take the case. We may see the same thing unfold here with the vaccine mandates if 25, 26, 27 states automatically sign on together. And you may see the same type of situation in which they're not going to be able to punt and they're going to have to take this case. And I hope and pray that they make the right decision because, listen, this is not 1905 and Massachusetts versus Jacobson, okay? This is not smallpox. This is something that they're trying to mandate that already most scientists have said are is absolutely terrible for you and could kill you. So there is a lot of discrepancy. This is not smallpox or the measles or something like that. This is completely different. Josh, I want to change gears here. We, we have uh, somebody, we have pasta coming up here uh, in about 10 minutes till the hour to talk about the California election yesterday. But uh, uh, you and I had spoken a little earlier in the day uh, about that. Uh, Ray, I am, I am just shocked at the people of California that they did not recall this, uh, this governor, which means to I me. I believe they did. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I agree with Josh. I'm not sure because there were so many reports of people going in to vote and they said, oh, you've already voted. Right. Now, yes. now what, 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 what did this mean, though? What, what was, it means that uh, masks are okay for some. If you're the working class, the masks are okay. But they're not okay for Pelosi and Newsom and that group. They, they've been caught many times without wearing masks. It's, it's a, right. a, a a victory for mandatory vaccines. It's That's a the first thing he said he was going to do. Yes, it's a victory for continued forest fires in their state. It's a it's a victory for um, homeless uh, having more and more homeless people. Uh, it goes on. And Water on. issues, brownouts, Water. blackouts. Yes, all of that. And uh, last night we uh, those people that were watching and, and I saw this on Rumble and maybe you have too some more voting magic where numbers all of a sudden disappeared that were on the mm -hmm. on the side of uh, uh, Larry uh, Elder. Uh, amazing. Uh, Neil, do you have, can you bring that up? Okay, the one on the left was the picture, and this was right on uh, CNN, okay? You see the number there? 2,225,915? While you're watching that, all of a sudden, bingo, what happened, Ray? Look at that number. You tell us what it is. Yeah, 1,874,206. Okay, about 350,000 votes all of a sudden disappeared. Now, here's, here's something strange is that at the top it says estimated percentage of votes was 52% on the left, and then that dropped as well. It yeah. dropped to 49%. Yeah. So how did they count, and then all of a sudden it they was less? They had fifty-two percent of the vote in early, and then it dropped down to forty-nine percent. Because the machines are hooked up to the internet, number one, which we saw in twenty twenty, and number two, they are probably counting the votes at Seidel, at Dominion, at uh, Smartmatic, SGO, offshore in Spain or some other country, and they are manipulating the votes and then sending 
that information back to the networks and then the networks are reporting it. But the thing is, is that CNN is so stupid that they actually allowed the votes to show being switched in real time. Now, I was thrown off of social media way back when because I was showing a video almost exactly like that. It was about the Kentucky governor's race between Andrew Brashear and Matt Bevin. Matt Bevin won that race in Kentucky clear. He won that race, and they did the same exact thing, except when I did the video and I showed it, I showed it three or four times. I slowed it down. I had circles around it, so I was really making sure that everybody had a chance to see it, and within two weeks, I was gone from social media because two weeks later was the election, and we know what happened. Wow. I'd like to throw a little theory out here. Um, we know the, uh, the California is the most populous state. It's got over 40 million people in it. Did you realize that, and this is a huge number, 47% of California's population was not born in the United States. 47, that's about 19 million people wow. were not born in the United States. Now, that's a fact. Okay, now I want to throw my theory out here. Now we open up the borders of the United States and we let 2 million, at least 2 million illegals are here now. And then we open up... Uh, our uh, our hospitality to a hundred thousand people that we got out of Afghanistan that are not Americans don't even have a sense of anything American because they've lived in a backwards country and now we're bringing them into this country and of course they will be allowed to vote too and we see what has happened with a state that have 47 percent of the people not being born here and then bringing in another couple of million and populating red states, that's states uh, that went Republican, populating red states, do, do you see a little bit of a plan here that uh, might become more and more apparent in the next couple of years? Josh, what yeah, do you think? They brought, they, they brought over all these, uh, these Afghan refugees that are really Taliban members. You know, maybe some of them shaved their beards, maybe even some of them didn't. They didn't bring over women and children. They brought over able-bodied men in their, you know, between 18 and 30. And, uh, yeah, you're right, because we're going to probably see another major terrorist attack pretty soon, too, based on this uh, horrible decision that just went down in, uh, in Afghanistan as well. But, yes, they want to then disperse these folks to the swing states or the red states because they want to make them more bluer. So you're no, no question about it. You are absolutely right on target. And, and you know, the, the thing that's, that's so sad, we bring in all these people over here and they're in some of our military bases. I understand they kind of have a free limit to, you know, just come and go, come and go. They can do pretty much what they want. We don't have enough food for them. They're still dressed in their garb from over there. And uh, it doesn't look like we've got a handle on this. Josh, we got to thank you. We're going to have to uh, swing out here and go to California in just a moment. Uh, no problem. Uh, thank pleasure. you so much. We miss you in the studio here. Yes. And uh, we love that picture of you as the albino or Dr. Evil. <laughs> and, <laughs> so we, we, will see you Eagle, again. You we will see you again next week. And thank you, you so much. To Josh Bernstein from JoshBernsteinUncensored.com. <laughs> and more to come. Don't go away.